Hi, in this video, we will walk you through how to configure the policy-based redirect feature on ACI. So the goal of policy-based redirect or PBR is to take east-west traffic outside of its normal path and redirect it to a service device such as a firewall. So a typical use case, for instance, would be you, you probably want SSH traffic to bypass the firewall, but you would like clear text communication such as HTTP to be redirected through a firewall for inspection. And that's exactly what we are going to do in this video. So the minimal topology that you require for this is essentially this one. So you can use a single verf and one tenant, but you need four bridge domains. And the way they are laid out is as follows. You're going to need a BD for the client and a BD for the server. All right, you could have a single BD for both, but let's keep things simple and um, isolate the client and the server in their own bridge domain and subnets. So the client is going to be uh, 192, 168, 66, 100, and the server is going to be 67, 100. Now we have a firewall up there, which is a virtual uh, version of the ASA. And that firewall has two interfaces, one on the outside and one on the inside. There is a bridge domain for the outside leg and a bridge domain for the inside leg. Each leg of the firewall sits in its own subnet and the firewall is in routed mode and that's uh, a, a must so you have to have a device which actually routes traffic you cannot have a transparent device there with pbr so because we have two different bds that implies that the subnets are also different so this side is 172.16.1.0 and this side is 172.16.2.0 right and the firewall is 254 and the bd is always one from a physical standpoint, there's a pair of 93180EX leaves over here. And then this is all one ESX host, which has uh, essentially a series of virtual machines for uh, all of this. All right. Now, let's go ahead and uh, configure the, the, uh, the resulting you know, logical configuration of this diagram in ACI. So um, let's go to ACI first. So we'll create a tenant for uh, PBR and we'll create one verf my main verf All right we are in the tenant so we have to configure four bridge domains if you remember one for the client okay and the client will be 192.168.66.1 that's the BD all right, then we need another one for the server, and that will be 192.168.67.1.24. And next, we need one BD for the firewall outside leg, and one BD for the firewall inside leg. So the outside, if you remember, is 172.16.1.1. And the inside, so the firewall inside is 172.16.2.1. All right, so this matches um, the topology that we have on the slide. All right, so what we can do next is a couple of things. Actually, we have to do something next. On each of the firewall BDs, both of the inside and outside legs, so on, on both of these legs, you have to turn off this configuration knob. So enable source VTAP learning on remote leaves. So what that means is when traffic is redirected, um, the source IP of the client and server will be learned on potentially incorrect interfaces, right? So if you look at the diagram, the client here will be redirected to the firewall and will come back essentially on that leg. So that could cause the leaf to learn that endpoint as being actually behind this leg, which is not what you want. So the way that we're going to avoid this is simply by configuring uh, this knob. So you want this 
unchecked. Okay, so you do that on both sides of the firewall, like that, and that's about it. So next, I'll configure an application profile. You know, my app. All right, I'll go to the app, and then I'll create two EPGs. One EPG for client, which I'll map to my client BD, and then one EPG for server, which I'll map to my, I don't want QS, um, which I'll map to server, so this doesn't matter. All right. Okay, and no contract yet, because the service graph will take care of communications between these two guys. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is also quite simple. Uh, I'll map my VMM domain to um, the EPGs. So my VMM domain is called Sugarball. So I'll just do that. And I'll also push it on the server side. All right, Sugarball, done. So what that allows me to do as soon as I click Submit is if I go on my vCenter, this is going to create port groups. And I can take my client, which is right here, and map the first interface to client, like so. And my server, and map it to the server side. All right. And at this point, of course, we can already do uh, a quick verification. 192.168.66.1. Uh, that should work. And on the uh, server side, which is right around here. So this is the server, by the way. So I'm going to check 67.1. And uh, that should work as well. All right. So this is... Simple uh, connectivity check between uh, client and uh, ACI, and we are good to go. So next is we need to configure the service graph. So policy-based redirect uh, requires a service graph. You can work in unmanaged mode, which is exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to keep things quite simple. Um, so we go to L47 devices. You right-click. You create the uh, device. We do not want a managed device. So this is a firewall. It's a virtual one. It's on VMM domain sugar ball. It's go to. Remember, this is the only mode which is supported with PBR. And this is the, the firewall that we want to use. Okay. We are interested in two interfaces, one which is client and one which is server. So client is NIC2. And server is nick3. All right. Okay, good. And then we need to create the um, the cluster interfaces here. So one for uh, client, one for server. So client, client. And then one for uh, server. And uh, I'll pick the server interface right there. All right, so that's done. Um, and then I finish this. And then next, you want to um, make a, a service graph template, which is basically HTTP PBR. Take the firewall, drag it in the middle. It's a routed firewall which has route redirect configured. This is essentially what activates PBR. So you submit, and then you need to render that graph, so apply it, if you will. So you apply the graph on a device. So the consumer side EPG is the client, and the provider side is the server. So that's pretty straightforward. We do a new contract, which is um, PBR for HTTP, but uh, no SSH, right? So if you remember, we want to do PBR for HTTP, but not for SSH. So we'll do a filter, HTTP, um, and that's going to be IP, TCP, port 80, update, and then we'll do next. All right, what we need to 
select next is the uh, the correct bridge domains. So if you refer back to the topology, one is going to be outside on the client side and inside on the server side. So here you basically go and select the firewall outside. That's on the client direction. And on this side, it's going to be the firewall inside. The interface is the client and the interface is the server, right? And next is the key thing, which is the redirect policy. So we're going to create a policy for redirecting the traffic. This is client to server and a destination IP. So, so in the client server direction is 172.16.1.254. And the Mac is the Mac of the firewall. So you want to go here, you want to do show interface client get the MAC address right there and then go back to uh, ACI and then input the MAC address in the format that the GUI is expecting. Okay, submit and on the reverse direction we'll do a server to client and on that side, it's 172.16.2.254. And then the MAC address is going to be probably one byte different. So show interface server. It's 89.28. So 89.28. So 89.28. And then I'll have to use the uh, that notation. Then I submit, All right, and then the graph looks correct, and then we can finish and submit. All right, we're done. Now, if everything was done correctly, you can look at vCenter, and you'll see uh, a few things happening. So port groups will be added, and the ASA VM will be reconfigured automatically for us twice. Um, so. It, APIC should basically uh, push the right port group membership you see twice because we have two interfaces so if you look at the ASAV now you should see that shadow EPGs were created one for outside client and one for inside server all right so you don't touch that leave it as it is now we pre-configure the ACI uh, the ASA I'm sorry but this is very simple so um, the way it's going to work is basically um, show interface brief um, show interface and then we have a client which has the correct IP address we have server which has the correct IP address we've done basic IP routing so as you can see we have static routes pointing into the right directions and then we have uh, a policy that permits uh, essentially if I remember correctly, probably everything. So it's you know a very simple configuration on, on the firewall. All right, so there's a couple of things we want to do next before verifying that um, everything is in place. Now, if you check the EPGs, they should have the right contract. All right, so the contract is there. You want to check for faults as usual, so no faults. So this is good. But what we said initially, if you remember, is for east-west traffic here, we want SSH to bypass the firewall and we want HTTP to be forced through the firewall. So we have to make a couple of changes to the contract. So we can simply, let me fold this back for visibility. I go back to security policies, contract. This is our PBR, which should have a subject. And that subject has uh, the service graph, all right, right there. But what I need to do is just add a new subject for SSH. And in that filter, so I can create a new one for SSH. And that filter will not have any redirect. So I just SSH over here, which is IPTCP22. Right. Like so. Submit. Submit. And now if you look at the contract, there's no graph for SSH and there's a graph for HTTP. 
So now we can uh, go ahead and test. So if we look at the application, right now, let's go ahead and bring up the VMs. So client and server. So I'm going to the client and then I'll bring up the server as well. So can I SSH to 192, 168, 100? That looks okay. So I'm in that uh, server. And if I look at the logs on the firewall, I see absolutely nothing, right? And there's no connections, basically nothing going through. Now let me go back to the uh, client and now I'm going to do a wget, which is HTTP 67100. And you see that now when we invoke HTTP, there is a connection created on the firewall. So that's, that's PBR at work. Um, I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.